Are you based in New York? I'm based in San Diego, California. Tell me how you discovered Andy Lakey. I received a phone call from one of my clients who was asking me to go look at a painting that he saw in the bank where he banked. He was considering doing a mural in a cabin that he had in Canada. And so I went and looked at the painting and then met the artist. And then Andy was working in a small garage back then. And I thought his work was phenomenal. And not only did I recommend my client to do the mural, which he did, but from then on, um, I worked with Andy and, and uh, told him that what he was doing, he should be doing for the blind, the raised surfaces of the paintings. And so from there, we struck up a very good um, relationship. And I've been working with Andy and, and uh, following his work and talking to him ever since. He's an unschooled artist. How is that to his advantage? Well, I think a lot of times we call these artists outsider artists, and that is because um, they don't have any formal education. But if you look back through art history, most of the artists that were, you know began, especially in early you know Paleolithic and Neolithic times, they had no schooling or education. What that does for him is it gives him the advantage of not having any preconceived notions from a school and dealing directly from his emotions and directly from his own consciousness and that is um, a very fresh outlook he's not influenced by anybody he's not taught by anybody so everything that he does come directly from his soul and, and directly from himself and that's like all the great artists Picasso basically didn't have any formal training either now um, you were influential in uh, guiding him toward painting for the blind and tell me how did that come about and I understand you have a kind of a personal mission regarding that I was um, a teacher at a, at a middle school for a number of years, and I was given a student, his name was Brian, and he was blind, and he never took art because nobody could work with him. So I said I would work with him, and when I was working with him, he was totally blind since birth. Um, I started to heat and colors and begin to develop techniques to be able to, do, to help him manifest his creative side, and he was very wonderful, and he ended up dying at the end of the school year of a brain tumor. And so when I met Andy, I saw that he had developed a technique that I had not used that would have been very instrumental in helping Brian be able to understand line, design, and surface of two-dimensional art and three-dimensional art. So um, I said to Andy, you should work with blind children and, and use your technique to help them further their creativity because in a museum they don't allow people to touch and that is the natural instinct with Andy's work. So Andy took that and he ran with it and um, he's been extremely um, beneficial to blind students and furthering the case of art history and fine art for these kinds of students in the school systems. And. Um, I think the work that he's done with the blind institutions in terms of raising money for Stevie Wonder and using Ray Charles and collecting paintings has been um, a wonderful gift to our society. But I think when I look at Andy's paintings, I marvel at the universality of the iconography. There's a few basic simple images that exist through art history, such as the, the hand, the spiral, the circle, and these angel, um, these angel iconographies are very very similar to how people probably felt in the medieval times when they looked at the Jesus and Mary iconography. They represent a form of spirituality that makes you feel good and gives you a notion of um, how you're going to lead your life based on this kind of um, this kind of spiritual work. I think when I look at Andy's paintings, I feel um, I feel content. I feel serene and um, I feel happy that he's managed to come forward with his message and so many people are appreciating it.